Hey, welcome back. 2070 Super, this big boy. Let's make it happen. So I ran it in its standard configuration as a baseline. I ran the same overclock on all of these tests, 150 on the clocks and 600 on the memory. I also weighed the standard uh, heatsink and the, the Peerless Assassin to see the difference in weight. So this got a max temp of 44. The standard cooler weighs 988-ish grams and the Assassin 867, but the other cooler still had the shroud on it. This plate I took off and noticed that I'll probably be able to use that to screw in, so I took some measurements and then I marked some holes and then screwed straight into that plate. That plate also served as the cooling for the VRAM, so I couldn't really get rid of it anyway without sticking heat sinks onto the VRAM and there wasn't enough space for that, so I really needed to keep that plate. Then I thought I'd better take care of the uh, VRMs that everyone seems to be so concerned about. So I put some thermal grizzly pads straight onto them and then heat sinks on top of that, cable ties to strap it all down, and this is what we ended up with, which I thought looked bloody awesome. One thing I didn't think of though was it not fitting against the motherboard so I had to use a riser cable. So then it was into the first test and I was, I was pretty underwhelmed actually to see it start at 30 degrees right away uh, considering the stock cooler started at 30 and we saw a max temp of 37 degrees which was underwhelming so I ran it again and saw a max temp of 36.7 so call it 37. So then I strapped on this AIO really trying to get to 25 degrees and it couldn't do it either. It got a max temp of 33 which is only 10 degrees cooler than the stock cooler. So I think all that I discovered is how to waste a huge amount of time. Modern GPUs already have sufficient heat sinks and I accomplished nothing. Next time though I'll try an aquarium pump and ice cold water. Catch you then.